first year here on the Hill, having replaced Rick Stansberry. Antonio Petty, Brett Smith, Christopher Merlot, our officials, Hilltoppers home in white. UTEP's got the navy blue on, and we are underway here in Kentucky. Matchup of styles. Western Kentucky loves to score. UTEP, one of the best defensive teams in the country. And there it is right away, a steal leading to offense and one for Otis Frazier the third. Well, right on cue, there they are. You see the team defense here, hands in the passing lanes, aggressive, tough, hands out. They're the number one turnover team in the country. 11.8 steals a game, and you saw it. Great way to start on the road. Teams average 19.2 turnovers per game when they play UTEP. Frazier is top 25 in the country in steals, and he makes the end one to make it three nothing Miners. I think it's worth noting, the Miners are 0-7 on the road. That's the start you want in a very difficult place to play here at Western Kentucky. That is the big topic for UTEP. Can we get a road win? There's Tyrone Marshall saying hello. Watch this team move without the basketball. They share it. They're unselfish. They can score in all five positions. Marshall's had a lot of big second halves this year for Western Kentucky. They want a big first half from him. Off to a good start. Here's Frazier, one of the returning starters for the Miners going into the year. Camper cut off, shot clock at 10, and that's out of the hands of Tay Hardy. And there's a cough up. Now, that's the other part of this sometimes for UTEP. They create a lot of turnovers. When they're not going well, they are also committing a lot of them. That's what Western Kentucky wants. They want to get half court defense work. UTEP doesn't get quick runouts and easy baskets. Western Kentucky with two road wins last week, something no other conference USA team had done yet this year. 2-0 on a road swing in conference play. There's Dante Allen on the board. Allen moving without the basketball. This team really moves the basketball. They share it so well. First start of the year for Allen was against UTEP in El Paso about a month ago. The Kentucky transfer, Dante Allen. There's a kick out and a three for Powell. Up ahead. Inside to Baba Carfe, and it wouldn't go down. Good recovery and defensive transition for UTEP. That's something they talked about today. Now Marshall on a run out. The step through and two. How about that throw ahead pass? Terrific offense. Throwing the basketball ahead. Western Kentucky so fast. And watch them on defense here. They'll switch everything. They can play all five positions and guard the basketball. The other part of this is that Western Kentucky is a top 20 team in the country defending the three. Here's their offense. Yeah, why they're so good offensively is they move without the basketball, never stopping. And how do you beat the other team down the court, one of the best defensive teams in the league? Throw the ball ahead, quick, easy baskets. 6-0 run now for the Hilltoppers. It can happen quickly. Only took about 90 seconds for them to get going offensively. This is a UTEP team not known for three-point shooting. Here's a tray by Frazier, in and out. And the long rebound comes out to Frazier, and it's swatted away by Brandon Newman. Now Brandon Newman, Purdue transfer, can really get up, physical, athletic, long. This is a long, long basketball team. Shot clock at 18. Hardy's got Newman on him now. Hey, Hardy into the corner. And now from the baseline, Camper Jr. on the miss. And even without numbers, Western Kentucky wants to push. Newman. And that rebound grab by John Dos Anjos, the 6'8 senior forward out of Brazil. They go right back into him, and he's got a basket. Really nice early offense there. Western Kentucky not quick back on that transition defense. Watch McHenry with the basketball. Always looking for his teammates. And obviously can really score at will. One guy the Hilltoppers expect to have in there at some point tonight, Christian Lander, who was a starter, cleared from concussion protocols and expected to play tonight. He's normally in there alongside McHenry, who's on the board now. Once again, right on cue. Can't really just score a silky smooth lefty. Plays a ton of minutes, 33 in the last game, 24 big points, and a 
terrific foul shooter, another thing that makes this team really dangerous as we turn into March because great guard play, physical defense. Tyrone Marshall picks up his first. That's two team fouls on the Hilltoppers. And Marshall's going to come out. Enoch Columbe in the lineup now for Western Kentucky, along with Rodney Howard, who goes up for a block. That time, Solomon trying to put it back in, and it's two for the Miners. And yeah, when you're on the road, get to the free throw line, get extra baskets. Offensive rebound, another way that this team can score. Alvin Solomon, the Stephen F. Austin transfer. Now Allen off the window. Howard had the tip into the hands of Allen. In amongst the trees, and he draws a foul. Part of what helped Western Kentucky win two road games in the conference last week was that they out-rebounded their opponents both time. A Thursday win at La Tech, and then Saturday at Jacksonville State, they owned the boards. Steve Lutz said that and not turning it over led to the 2-0 road swing through the conference last week for Western Kentucky. A quick look at Coach Lutz in his first season. Obviously, time at Purdue, time at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, so much success. And a lot of transfers on this team, but also some really good-looking freshmen. Allen's one of them. An early four for Dante Allen. Good free-throw shooter at 74% in the top sleeve by three. Terrell Jr., one of several talented freshmen for the Miners, goes in the corner to Dos Anjos, who can't hit the three. And look at McHenry on the take. McHenry's got another two. Interesting how he can go to his right, but then shoot with his left. Terrific offensive player, and I was talking about Allen before, obviously. He was a transfer from Kentucky. So many good transfers on this team for Coach Lutz. Camper Jr. lost it on the way up. Good hands by Allen. The Miners, they'll get it right back. Terrell Jr. passes up the three. Hardy with a jump pass. The extra pass out to Camper. And short on the three. And the struggle is showing up from downtown early for UTEP. They're 0 5 from beyond the arc. There's an offensive foul on Allen. 12-7 Western Kentucky off to a good start. They're 10 Green Kentucky. Time for a look at the AT&T fast analysis. Mo, what do you got? Well, as we talked about, UTEP leads the league in turnover margin. They're going to try to turn them over. they got to be plus five in that tonight to have a shot. And Western Kentucky, as we've seen early, the way they're shooting it here, five freight from the field, they want to get in the 80s, and they really want to get up and down and score. When they don't, they struggle. And this team of late is obviously playing really well, winning five of the last six. And there's the number. Look at that, 19.2 to it's lead amazing. the country. And a lot of that comes from their 11.8 steals per game. And it's a team effort. It's not just one guy. It's obviously a philosophy. It's how they know they have to create offense. Basically, the entire team <laughs> among the core players is averaging one to two steals per game to get to that point. They're down five, Miners ball, and they cough it up. Another thing I think worth mentioning about Western Kentucky is depth. They play a lot of guys, got some freshmen, as I was talking about before, and some real veteran play in the transfers. McHenry will bring it up, the reigning conference player of the week. has got four already. Howard and Columbe still in there in reserve, and Tegan Moore part of that group now, too, and Christian Lander, four in white, playing for the first time in several games. Finally back on the floor from concussion issues, so Lander's a key guy for them to get back. The Indiana transfer, guy who goes back a long ways with Steve Lutz. And Columbe at the line. Horton had that foul for the Miners. And they've got a couple of team fouls already. And now we'll see Trey Horton, the third, come out for UTEP. And Otis Frazier, the third, right back in. They've got Horton, the third. They've got Frazier, the third. And they've got Terrell Jr. Colin Bay making the second one. It's a lot of lineage. So UTEP needs bucket now, down by seven. It's a 6-0 run again. Western Kentucky's had a couple of those tonight. Frazier's got the touch. 
Nice job, left hand get to the basket. Don't settle for a jump shot. UTEP needs to get in that paint to score. George Mason transfer and returning starter, Frazier the third, and there's Rodney Howard on the board. He averages 10 per game, and he's got his first bucket. Georgia Tech transfer, big physical veteran player in the front court. He had 16 against UTEP in that first meeting in El Paso a few weeks ago, which was a high-scoring game with all kinds of ties and lead changes, ultimately won by UTEP. That's one of their four conference wins. Down on the floor, it's Solomon, finds an outlet, and now Hardy. And Tay Hardy still not able to find the scoring column, and the loose ball is going to be Western Kentucky basketball. This game has a little bit of a kind of postseason feel, a lot of back and forth, not a lot of fouls, aggressive play. Both these teams kind of find their way as they move through February here and be in March before you know it, and, and jockeying position as we featured in the open in the league standings. UTEP still over from downtown so far. Moore goes in hard, and he'll get free throws. Tegan Moore, freshman guard, getting a lot more minutes for Western Kentucky, especially during that stretch where Lander was out. And he's from about three hours away near Cincinnati, up in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. And Tegan Moore at the stripe. Nice mix of veteran guys, transfers, and some freshmen in this program. Kevin Kalu had that foul for UTEP. And McHenry will get a rare breather. And it's Jack Edlin into the lineup for Western Kentucky, the Louisville native. Moore finds the roll on the second one. And the Hilltoppers take an eight-point lead. Miners need to find a way to get Hardy going here. Terrell Jr., reigning freshman of the week in the conference, and he's got his first basket. Guy that can really score, and they're going to need him to score as well. Parents, both UTEP graduates. He's been the freshman of the week in the conference three weeks in a row, and UTEP has had the freshman of the week six consecutive weeks in Conference USA. Solomon up to get the rebound off the Howard miss. Here come the Miners. Frazier the third trying to go into Solomon. Loose ball. Another turnover by UTEP. Hilltoppers give it right back. Hardy behind the back. And Solomon finds a way to get it in. Talked about their defensive prowess, how they lead the country in, in uh, turnovers per game, 11.8 steals per game. And just when you think you're moving on offense, boy, they're in a passing lane. And that's just great team defense. Tegan Moore, too strong on the three. And Hardy with a battle with Kalu for the rebound. Approaching 12 minutes, Hilltoppers lead by four. Terrell Jr. trying to dribble out of traffic. Solomon, and they still have not hit a three. Miners are now 0 of 6. They only make about five and a half threes per game. It's not a big, strong suit for their offense. Yeah, tough to win on the road when you don't make any threes, and they've got to get to the basket. Columbay, the extra pass. Lander looked like it was partially blocked by Tay Hardy. There's the double on Hardy. Pass inside for Kalu. Good recovery there by the Hilltoppers, and Howard knocked it out. Western Kentucky. Kentucky on top of UTEP, 17 to 13, and that's the scoop here in Bowling Green. Couldn't resist it, thank nice. you. Don McHenry and David Terrell Jr. have won some accolades this week, Mo. All the hardware in Conference USA is in this game tonight. Well, you know, arguably the freshman of the year in the league and maybe the player of the year in the league. Two guys that have put up big numbers and they've performed here as well. I'd like to go grab a scoop of that ice cream, help my sore throat from all this travel. Did you get a look at what flavor we think it is? It looked maybe like a I'm, chocolate chip. I'm going a... with a green mint chip. Eh? Oh, green, okay. Mint chocolate chip, we've mint, got mint confirmation, and that is now the lead story here, is whether we can get Mo some mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> John Dosanjo says four points 
And UTEP's within a pair. A nice job out of the timeout, getting the ball to the basket, not settling for a three going inside for UTEP. McHenry still on the bench right now for Western Kentucky. Brandon Newman draws a foul. 6-0 run right now for the Miners. And under 11 to go, and that foul is on David Terrell Jr., and he's got two now. And that's 14 fouls on UTEP. So Terrell Jr. is going to come out. Zid Powell, their point guard, comes back in. Newman to Lander. Purdue transfer to Indiana transfer. Lander had it blocked away. Otis Frazier the third had the swat. And now the Miners are looking for a tie or a lead here on the take. Contact at the rim. No call. Frazier the third fell down. It's a run out for the toppers now. Allen left wide open and hits. Style of play right. Western Kentucky so good. When they're pushing the ball at the basketball court and sharing the ball, and UTEP so good in that team defense. They gotta be really happy where they are in this first half right now. Frazier the third into Dos Anjos. Ten minutes to go in the half. The shot clock under ten. UTEP 0 for 6 from downtown in the game. Western Kentucky so good at pushing the pace. Great team defense there. Watch them throw the basketball ahead. Couple quick dribbles, throw it ahead, make that extra pass. Transition defense not good enough there for UTEP. Western Kentucky takes advantage. McHenry back in now for the Hilltoppers. Trying to beat the shot clock and it almost went down. It's tipped out. And Baba Carfay has the rebound for Western Kentucky. Lander the kick out, Allen again. And that one no good. Frazier from three, too strong. And the struggles continue for UTEP from beyond the arc. They had it within two, and now Western Kentucky up five with the ball. Tough shot inside by Newman and tipped in by Faye. Nice little change of pace there offensively. Push it up, you don't have anything. Run some offense, attack that offensive glass. Use the size that Western Kentucky has in the front court. Faye at 6'8", transfer from College of Charleston. Horton the third, off the mark. Allen's got the rebound. This is where McHenry's so good in the front court. Into Faye, and he got bumped from behind by Dos Anjos. Watch Faye here. Body position, great hands, touch. Really good overall field goal percentage, over 60% for him, and that's what he does well and gives this team some real depth and size in the front court. I like this Western Kentucky team. Mentioned how they've been playing, obviously, of late, you know, winning four of uh, five of their last six, obviously. Uh, but this is a team to watch out for coming in March. Moore comes back in. Lander, again, having missed several games with the concussion issues, so they're monitoring him as he got cleared, and he'll go back to the bench now for the toppers. Tegan Moore got free, lays it up and in. Well, aggressive hedge by UTEP, trying to get the ball out of McHenry's hands. Once you do that, though, you got to sprint back on defense, and that time Western Kentucky takes advantage. Up to a nine-point lead. Now what was a 6-0 UTEP run is now 7-0 for Western Kentucky, and there's a three. Tay Hardy gets the lid off from downtown for the Miners. Well, we featured him in the open. A little over 15 points a game. He's going to have to score and continue to score for UTEP on, on offense, especially in the half court. Faye inside and one. Off a beautiful feed from Newman. Baba Carfay throws it home. And with under eight to go in the first half, Western Kentucky back up. Up them in transition. You're in big trouble here, especially at home. And See Coach Lutz there, and guy who's just won everywhere he's been in his first year here. Terrific tradition here at Western Kentucky. 
Up tempo offense number one in Conference USA top 50 in the country in points per game. We're also the best team in the conference in rebounds per game and top 25 in that category. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. It's Faye at the line missing the end one opportunity but getting the offensive rebound. Moore on the baseline steps through and Tegan Moore is having a terrific first half. Yeah great size Tegan Moore talked about the freshman off the bench and his ability to get to the rim really helps him. Offensive rebound on a missed free throw box out. That's the stuff on the road that just drives coaches crazy. Jones unable to respond. Elijah Jones, one of the freshmen. There are several in the rotation for UTEP. The toppers have made their last four shots. McHenry adds to it, and they're five for their last five. How about his ability to go to the right? And then finish with his left hand. Terrific, terrific lead guard for the Hilltoppers. This is a 13 to 3 run night right now for Western Kentucky. And Powell stepped out of bounds, getting that ball in the corner. Well, Don, Don McHenry, you know, reigning conference USA player of the week and a little over 16 a game. I want to tell you how hard this is, you know, left handed going to his strong right hand. Watch him flip the ball back up with his left. Crafty, crafty, silky smooth lefty. He finds a way to not get his shot blocked, even though he goes in among the towers there. Newman has Hardy on him. Here comes McHenry again. Moore fighting his way in. Saved by Allen. And it's going to stay with the Hilltoppers. The shot clock at four. Got to get something quick here. Baseline out of bounds underneath. McHenry taking it out. Coach calling the play. Get something going to the basket. Allen, tough shot of the baseline. Rebounded by Jones. Hardy, they need this one. And they got it. Well, gives it Powell a lot of credit there. Throwing the basketball ahead. No defense there. And Hardy, as we featured in the open, one of the better, really, all around tough cards in the league. McHenry. And how did that go in? Now he's going to his right, doing trick shots with his left hand. UTEP saying, Are you kidding me right now? Eight for McHenry. He's had 20 plus in four consecutive games, and he's on his way. He's like one of those guys. You know, it's unique. He's actually faster with the basketball in his hand. Just really can get to the rim. Hardy gets cut off. Nice pass inside. And a foul inside. Powell got his man up in the air. And this is going to be on Brandon Newman, his first. That's 14 fouls on Western Kentucky. 11-point game approaching five minutes here in the first half. Will Toppers just a half game back at the top in Conference USA. Powell has his first point. He gives them 10.6 per game. Philadelphia native and Buffalo transfer. Allen out for the Hilltoppers. And Enoch Columbay back in. And Powell got them both. Joe Golding trying to get his guys going down by nine. Trying to stop Don McHenry. Everybody in Conference USA is trying to do that this year. Howard up against Hardy with a size mismatch, and Hardy picks up his first foul. That's seven now on UTEP as far as team fouls go. And Hardy 6'11. He's a 70% free throw shooter. I mentioned he's the Georgia Tech transfer. He had three years there. Such a balanced Western Kentucky offense, Mo. We mentioned that they got seven guys averaging between seven and ten. So McHenry's the headliner, but you've got to worry about a lot when you're trying to guard the Hilltoppers. Yeah, and a balanced, you know, roster, as we mentioned, too. They've got some nice youth off the bench and some real veteran play with all these transfers. Ten point game under five and a half to go in the first half. 
Backdoor cut, Powell, the kick, and the three for Camper Jr. That's been good offense for UTEP. The last couple of threes they've made have been within the offense. Throwing the ball ahead in transition or a dribble drive with guys with their feet set. Much better offense here late in the first half. He had 19 in the first meeting. He's a the guy they want to get going, and now the Miners get a stop. Another steal as well. They are closing in on their program record. They've got a total of four tonight, so they are three away from the record, and there's a big three by Elijah Jones. You said it, to win on the road, you got to hit some threes, and the Miners are starting to find that stroke, and there's a steal. Up to Hardy, one-on-one -on -one with Moore, and one for Tay Hardy. Wow. Is he tough? How about that finish? Steal, hands, jumping in the passing lane, catching, throw the ball ahead. And I like this offense. Dribble drive, it sets your feet. The reason they've made some threes is just because they've run better offense. And then, I'll tell you what, Tay Hardy can flat out get to the rack, can he? We've got a timeout. It's a 30 to a full. Hilltoppers slide by two. Now, and look at that. They are two steals wow. away from a new program record, which they tied last year. They've got six more games after tonight. Amazing. They're going to shatter this thing. Sure are. Five steals already tonight. <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach, Coach. That's why I'm sitting over here next to you, because <laughs> I can't do that anymore. I'll tell you what, rubbing his head and saying, oh, we got five seals. We need about 10 more here to stay in this game. So, well, this staff done a nice job, though, coming in here, tough place to play. No doubt. And they are intent on that record tonight, because not so much the record itself, but they know in order to win this game, they have to get a bunch of steals. They've had nine plus steals in 10 consecutive games. So they're on their way. And it's been a calling card for, for Joe Golding going back to his Abilene Christian days. Yeah, Joe, great player at Abilene Christian. Coach there obviously had a lot of success. And, you know, they've also not won a road game this year. So this has a, you know, road game at Western Kentucky uh, checks a lot of boxes. And another steal. There's a steal. Hardy gets fouled. And this is vintage Miners ball right now. Their offense is totally fueled by the defense. And it's not just one guy. This is team defense. Hands in the passing lane, jumping, tips, throw the, you know, and this is, leads to quick early offense, and then boom, you're on the road. Another key, get to the free throw line. Easy points. That was a huge story in their win against Western Kentucky a month ago. They got to the line a ton. They were 24 of 29 in free throws. Western Kentucky only made five in that game. 19 point difference at the stripe the last time they met. Isn't it interesting, too? A couple made threes, and all of a sudden the confidence grows on the road, and coach and crew then turn up the uh, screws a little bit on defense. Hardy's got 10 now. Southern Miss transfer. Native of Ellenwood, Georgia. Too strong effort for the miss. Grabbed inside by Kalu and then taken away by Western Kentucky. That's a second or third free throw box out missed by both teams here today. Little things. Oh, nice pass and catch. Rodney Howard's got five. Deontay Allen, terrific pass. Not keeping the basketball in his hands there. It was tied. Now Western Kentucky back up by a pair inside of four minutes here in the first half. Powell with a dangerous pass inside. There were two Hilltoppers all over Kalu. Good offense means moving the basketball. Watch this. Little double team comes. Catch, pass. Great hands by the big fella. And what got it open was they were doubling McHenry. Yep. And when you double, you got to really sprint out to help. And again, nice pass, catch, and finish. Hardy starting to feel it. Powell, the tip in. Get to the foul line, get turnovers, get extra baskets, another offensive rebound. I believe the fourth now for UTEP. Tied at 35. Howard. Pulled away by UTEP, and it looks like they're going to call Howard for a foul, and the Miners love that call. That's his first. And both teams are in the bonus, so we'll walk to the other end as Steve Lutz less than thrilled. The last time the Miners had the lead 
was three to two, 30 seconds into the ball game. And Kalu, good on the front end. Coming up, it's AT&T at the half in the studio tonight. Kiana Martin, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, and Seth Davis. AT&T at the half right around the corner. One more for Kalu. He's only 43% on the year. Hits them both. Wow. Terrific job. And look at UTEP with the lead. The first half that has seen the Hilltoppers lead by as many as a dozen. Miners on top. Allen had it blocked away. That was Kalu. Miners have numbers. Frazier, the third, looking for a poster. Misses on the up and under. And inside, we've got a whistle, and it looks like a foul against Dante Allen. And it'll send Kalu to the line, where he just made a couple. One thing about UTEP, too, Mo, we, we talk so much about Western Kentucky because they average 80 points a game. UTEP doesn't want to play slowly. They're just not quite at the degree of the Hilltoppers, but they're good to, to get in an up-and-down matchup with you. Their big number is 70. They yep. win most of their games when they get to 70. Hilltoppers' magic number is that 80 mark. Lander couldn't save it, and a costly turnover is going to give it right back to UTEP. Yeah, really good point, UTEP. 12-1 and one when they're over 70, and they're kind of on the way to that tonight. You know, it's been a lot of little things. Steals, defense, which we certainly know they do, but, you know, offensive rebounds, free throw shooting, and they've really been the tougher team here this last five or six minutes. Powell, the mid-range two, Faye the rebound. Inside of three minutes, here's McHenry, the hesitation, tough shot as usual, Moore going for the rebound, ripped away by Frazier the third. Camper Jr. passes up the three. They want him to be more aggressive on offense. Here's Kalu up against Fay, blocked away by Babakar Fay. And there's Moore again. Nice throw ahead by Lander as well there. And you see West Kentucky, really an unselfish team as well when they get around the basket. Tied at 37. Joe Golding talked today about how they have to get back on defense. And that time the Hilltoppers beat some of their guys back down the floor. Shot clock down to five. Hardy's got to get it up. He fades, and he barely hits iron. Lander wide open. Hardy with a nice feed inside. Reverse Powell and one. Wow. Gives it Powell a lot of credit. Really running this court. He gave it up. You see him come down the sideline there, keep moving without the basketball. Catch, finish. Back to the foul line again. You know, UTEP, the Miners have found a way here on the road. We've talked. They have not won a road game, but tonight they are certainly on their way to being really competitive through this game and a really tough place to play. Defense is fueled by takeaways. Their offense is fueled by getting to the line. They're 15th in the country in free throws made per game. They're going to bring in Baylor Hebb, and they'll get Powell to the bench with under 90 seconds before halftime. Now Western Kentucky trailing by three. McHenry uses the screen from Fay. Goes inside, tough shot. Fay went for it, and it's going to stay at this end. McHenry just so fearless inside. Shot clock's at eight with 64 seconds to go in the half. Newman, nice pass inside, and Faye got fouled. Boy, we've seen both teams with some dimes tonight. They really have, and, 
I'll tell you what, no easy baskets around the rim now either. Elijah Jones picks up his first foul. It'll be Brandon Newman at the line. Check it, Baba Carfay at the line. And he missed the first one. Now, UTEP thought it was a one and one. It was a shooting foul violation. The Miners were grabbing the rebound and looking to run, but it was a shooting foul. So there's one more coming. Faye, native of Senegal, came up through the NBA Academy in Africa, then transferred to Western Kentucky from College of Charleston. Misses them both. And Hardy will bring it up for the Miners, leading by three. Camper Jr. up against McHenry. Passes out of the double. And it's Hebb unable to get the roll. And there's about a three second difference now. Game clock to shot clock. What a move by Faye. And he goes up hard and falls hard. Wow. He was up to throw it down and he drew a foul. I was just about to talk about the shot clock and saw him go to the middle lane and said he's not worried about the shot clock right now. He's trying to get that to the rim and he's been really good in the first half. You know, aggressive getting the foul line and tell you what, some athletes and physical play in this terrific, terrific Conference USA League. 27.1 on the clock. He's right back at the stripe. 72%. I'm sorry, 63% on the year. And he hits the first one. And the Miners are going to sub in. They'll take Elijah Jones out. He just picked up his second foul. And they'll bring John Dos Santos back in. And McHenry's going to come out for the Hilltoppers. We've got Edlin, Lander, Faye, Howard. In the lineup there along with Newman. And he hits them both. He's got four now. And it's a one point game. And UTEP can hold for the last shot here, and well, they should. I think it's got to be something with Hardy, maybe in a ball screen action. Let him try to create. Here he comes to get the basketball. A little flat ball screen up high, maybe. Lander is on him, taking a peek to see if a screen is coming. Here it comes. Camper Jr. sets it. Hardy, one second, got to get it up. And it would have counted had it gone, but he could not get it down. One point DAA history. Look at that quintet. She has done it and did it very early in the Hawkeyes game so far tonight. Congratulations to the tremendous Caitlin Clark. Well, folks, I have an Iowa Hawkeye sitting next to me here <laughs> in the broadcast table, and he is thrilled as is the whole country watching the great Caitlin Clark. Just presenting the facts, Mo. Just presenting the facts as they are presented you, to us. You did it well. You did it well. You were standing up on the table. Though. <laughs> no subjectivity at all involved in those comments. 20 seconds in, UTEP ball on that baseline, leading by a point. They trail by as many as 12 in that first half. Here's Frazier, the third, lowers the shoulder on Allen, and it's going to stay with the Miners and seven on the shot clock. Hardy working on Newman. Long fade, and off the mark, Allen's got the board. In the corner, Newman, hello. And how about that pass by Don McHenry? One, two dribbles, boom, snap that ball ahead, run to the spot, terrific offense. And one of the keys for UTEP, transition defense, not back quick enough. Right inside now to Kalu, and he traveled. And there's a cough up by the Miners. 
You know, Western Kentucky with Newman hitting that corner three. He is a guy that Steve Lutz has talked about that they feel can be an elite shooter. He's only 30 percent on the year from downtown, but they want him to take open threes when they are there. The former Purdue Boilermaker. Tyrone Marshall trying to go inside to Fa, and there's a takeaway for UTEP. Out of the corner. That was Camper Jr. on the miss. Hardy will try. And they struggled early in that first half from downtown. Missed a couple here on this possession. Will Topper's ball leading by two. And that last steal by UTEP gives them a new school record. They've got seven tonight for a total of 289 steals on the year. They are going to shatter the previous record of 288. Here's the takeaway. Good hands, though, by McHenry to recover. And Fa will throw it home. Teach that a little bit in. Defensive transition, you tip from behind, nice tip, throw ahead, and I'll tell you what, Tom McHenry really does a nice job of not keeping the basketball in his hands, always looking for his teammates throwing the ball ahead. Terrific passer in addition to scorer, and that's been on display tonight. Frazier the third, caught underneath, finds Powell, couldn't finish, and contact going up, and free throws coming for Kevin Kalu. Just a terrific point guard here, throwing the ball, had a little no-look pass there just in time, and always looking for his teammates, and their transition offense so good, and for UTEP, stay in this game here on the road, now down four. Got to sprint back in transition defense. Kalu, now two out of four on the night at the free throw line. CBS Sports celebrates Black History Month, paying tribute to the triumphs, influence on culture, and legacy of achievement. One more for Kevin Kalu, and he missed them both. Free throws are a big part of UTEP's game. They get to the line a ton. McHenry capitalizes at the other end. So great players too, right? You need big plays, throw the ball ahead, transition, get his teammate a dunk, and then a three, and all of a sudden the crowd in the game, and he is really special. He's got a dozen. Second leading scorer in Conference USA, Don McHenry. Terrell Jr. and the reigning Conference Freshman of the Week hits a three. Boy, big time shot from young guard. is going to be a terrific player in this league. His mom, Kiana, played for UTEP on the women's team, a standout in the 90s. His dad, David, was an all-conference football player in the 90s at UTEP. Fa tries to tip it out, but nobody's there. It'll be Miner's ball. A nice, you know, cornerstone piece for them with some transfers that they mix in and a local freshman. So terrific guard and a big shot when they needed it for UTEP. Elijah Jones, a freshman. Trey Horton, the third, a freshman. A lot of minutes for this Miner's team from the youth. There's another three. That's Camper Jr. with his second triple of the night. And here they come again. One point game. Little Rock, Arkansas, junior college transfer. McHenry with a runner and another tough shot. Man. Tell you what, if I was UTEP, I'd make him go to his left. I know that sounds almost wrong with that lefty, but he's so good going to his right and finishing. Camper Jr. hits another one. Well, the Miners are feeling it now. Nice offense. Tied at 49. Well, the first meeting between these two teams a few weeks ago had 15 ties and nine lead changes. McHenry off the mark. UTEP won in El Paso on January the 20th in an upset of the Hilltoppers. That's one of their four conference wins. Again, Western Kentucky, six conference wins. Half game back at the top. Fogg collides with Kalu, and that'll take us to a timeout. Well, Don McHenry, one of the best lead guards in Conference USA, just can create his own shot. Silky Spain mint chocolate chip ice cream delivery to Mr. Mo Casera. 
And we'll get back to the ice cream in a second. Joel Golding, here's his path. We talked about his roots at Abilene Christian, played there, coached there, got them their first tournament win in school history. They took down Texas in round one a couple of years ago as a 14 seed over a three. Third year now in El Paso for Joe Golding. They've been in the NCAA tournament twice in the last three years. 20 wins right away in his first season. He's off to a terrific start here with the Miners, and they're trying to make a mid-February run toward the top of the conference. Well, I'm going to let you carry the rest of the game. I'm going to enjoy this <laughs> Cheney's green mint chip ice cream, and well appreciated. Apologize to the fans out there. I lost my voice on the plane ride here today somehow, and uh, the ice cream's kind of making it work. And uh, speaking of making it work, out of that timeout, big, big three off the bench. Christian Lander back after missing several games with concussion issues. That's got to be a really good feeling for him to knock down that three. Terrell Jr. going inside. Offensive rebound put back by Solomon. It was swatted away. He'll try it again. There's Kalu for two. Boy, they have played physical around the rim. Haven't they? Creating extra shots. That's what you got to do on the road. Tegan Moore, big first half. That one blocked. Look at Kalu getting back and now running the floor. Feed the big man. Give they it do. To him. Yes. He'll try it again, and he gets fouled. And they are letting him play inside, and Kevin Callow doing work at both ends right now for the Miners. Got to give this minor team a lot of credit. You know, every time I feel like Western Kentucky's getting a little momentum at home here, they've found a way to, you know, get a block, get a steal, get to the foul line, and been the more aggressive team here the last couple minutes. But Tegan Moore's got three fouls. Kalu, good at the line. Again, it's not his best attribute as a player hitting free throws, but he's been there several times tonight, and he's hit four of them out of his six points. Yeah, 43% coming into the game, but I'll tell you what, his energy and effort, a couple rebounds, loose balls around the rim, and UTEP back with the lead here. A little full-court pressure now, trying to put a little extra of that defensive pressure on Western Kentucky. And Moore staying in for the Hilltoppers with those three fouls. Top of your screen in that corner as McHenry goes to work. Toppers down by one. They go into Moore and one. Tegan Moore is coming on for this Hilltoppers team. He's got nine tonight. Yeah, what set that up? Little hook bounce pass there. Set it up so the defense can't get it. Tell you what, this young freshman here can really score around the rim. Great size and poise. Kentucky native converts at the line. He's got 10. And the Hilltoppers have the two-point lead. <laughs> Coach, happy with the bench play here for the tops. Hilltoppers are 10 and 1 on the year in this building. UTEP 0-7 on the road. Which trend is going to continue tonight? Jones off the glass. Offensive rebound by Hardy. Camper's been hot. That one wouldn't go. Howard the rebound. McHenry in the corner. Lander. And Moore got hooked on a clear out inside. And a foul called against Calvin Solomon. And that's two now on the Houston native. Third team fouled against UTEP. Howard lost it. Solomon didn't see it right away. Now picks it up. Numbers for the Miners. Solomon all the way in. And Howard clears the glass. Boy, if you're going to the rack, you are going to find some bodies up near the rim. Howard throwing home. This pace really favors Western Kentucky. Throw the ball ahead in transition. For UTEP, they're so aggressive on the defensive end. You know, getting steals, running out, and if you don't make a pay on the other end with a basket or a free throw, boy, it's tough to get back, and Rodney Howard makes him pay this time. Third foul on Elijah Jones, so he comes out. They also took Calvin Solomon out. He's got the two fouls. Joe Golding talking with his bench. 
Enoch Colombe is back in for Western Kentucky. Dante Allen going to the bench. Howard at the line, 70%. Rims out. UTEP 0 for their last four from the field. Let's see where they go to try to get a bucket. Tay Hardy's got 10 on the night. They'll go out to Camper Jr. Lander wants to run. Gets it back from Column Bay. McHenry wants a three. This place would have been rough if he hit that one. I think the roof might have come off this place. And now a nice offense in transition. And important possession here for UTEP. Kind of slow this momentum down. See if they can get something going inside. Both teams low 30s tonight with their three-point field goal percentage. And now Hardy gets fouled inside. And it'll be free throws now for Tay Hardy. Yeah, veteran play there. Tay Hardy, 72% free throw shooter. But you need a basket. You also need to slow this pace down a little bit. Nice job. Second foul on Rodney Howard. Hardy 72% at the line on the year. And misses the first one. Tomorrow night at 9 Eastern, don't miss the fifth-ranked Denver Pioneers taking on the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. It's college hockey right here on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, Dave Starman. Cool little college hockey on the network. Four-point lead still for the Hilltoppers. Here wow. comes a tough defense by the Miners. As usual, they take it away. And a tough shot goes in for Frazier. Wow. We've seen some tough shots go down tonight. This one might be top of the list. Watch that aggressive hedge. Play without fouling. Just body up, physical play. Get out and run. Terrific job. That's what UTEP does. And on the road here, it's defense leads to offense. Frazier, the third, hits them both. Top 25 in the country in steals. He converts at the offensive end. It's been a record-breaking night tonight for the Miners with steals. And right now, they're back within a point. Jack Edlin into Rodney Howard. And a foul. Hardy came over from the weak side. And Hardy's going to pick up his second foul. That's why they're so good defensively. Little weak side. He saw the play coming, trying to go into the post there. But when that happens, you have to not foul. You have to body up and not foul. Like they did when they forced that last turnover. Not fouling is one of UTEP's best assets. That time they give him another possession. You know, they lead the country in steals per game. They don't press a lot. They're right. getting him in the half court. If you told somebody they lead the country in steals, you'd think there's some great full court press and trap. And a lot of it is just jumping passing lanes, getting around screens like that. Exactly. They right. anticipate so well, it seems like. And they're bothersome, right? You know, it's not like the old uh, Havoc days of, wow, VCU, Shaka Smart. That's just great team defense. UTEP down a point. They're UTEP has won two of their last three games. They played arguably their best game of the year last Saturday, routing their regional rival, New Mexico State, beat the Aggies 74 to 49 and had 14 steals in that one. Dos Anjos goes up. He was met by Columbe. And the Hilltoppers cleared away, leading by a point. Columbe inside, and he's got a pair. That's where they're good in transition. Throwing the ball ahead, tacking the rim. He came with Don McHenry from Indian Hills Community College. They played for Hank Pona, who's now on the staff, staff yep. for Western Kentucky. Dos Santos unable to tie it up. McHenry, those hesitation moves, always keeps the dribble alive. Well, crossover, the kiss off the glass, and he's got 16. How about the motor, right? Just keeps going and going and going. You take a bad shot, and he's going to make you pay. Now Hardy out of the double. 
Terrell Jr. lost it, but it's into the hands of Powell. The shot clock's at 10, and Hardy stepped out of bounds. Corey Camper Jr. back in for UTEP. Dos Anjos and Terrell Jr. will check out. Tegan Moore out for the Hilltoppers, and Tyrone Marshall, the Nashville native, back in. Howard inside to Colombe and a tie up. And it's going to stay with the Hilltoppers. Colombe from Quebec, Canada. Mentioned he came over from Indian Hills Community College. Marshall will trigger with 15 on the shot clock. Newman tried to go across to Marshall. Miners were in the passing lane as always. Frazier the third and one. And this is what UTEP does. They hang around. It's just incredible. Watch everybody move in defense. Just hands up in passing lanes. And this is where they're good in offense because they just create mismatches in that transition. But it's their defense that is just relentless. And the George Mason transfer, Otis Frazier, the third, misses the free throw, but yeah, looks like we got a lane violation. Everybody really excited to try to get in there. <laughs> Steve Lutz said he feels like Otis Frazier, the third, is really a, an X factor for UTEP as they were scouting the minors for this game. That one. A miss and Colum Bay the rebound. Three point game. Ten minutes to go here in Kentucky. Newman got some separation from Hardy and buries a long two. Probably need to get him a few more looks on offense because he can really stroke it when he gets his feet set. Purdue transfers got five tonight. Now Kalu against Columbe out to Hardy with the shot clock at 10. Hardy trying to shake Newman goes in and scores. Featured him in the open and I'll tell you what versatile tough guard he just got some motor keeps getting to the basket and you tap down three got to string a couple stops together. Newman little floater left it short kalu has got the rebound. Powell, what a spin, and at the rim he got fouled. My goodness. Tay Hardy, just some motor boy. You gotta just move your feet, move your feet. You gotta chest him up, because he's also physical, too. He can really get to the rim. And can't let him get all the way to the rack, and he does, and UTEP gets the stop they need. Back to the free throw line. Foul was on Tyrone Marshall. That's his third. Powell's a good free throw shooter. That one rims out. Sid Powell. Transfer from Buffalo. It's another of their guys who's always looking for a steal. Yes. 52nd in the country coming into tonight in steals per game. Sid Powell, point guard. His job usually to set up Hardy. Talked about McHenry and, and Columbe on this team with an assistant that they played for at the community college level. Same thing for Zid Powell at Beaver County Community College, played for Brian Spriggs, who's on the UTEP staff. Two point game. Lander goes to McHenry, and that one got tipped, tipped, tipped yeah. by Hardy. Powell again, trying to finish that one off and does. I'll tell you, Powell and Hardy, just physical, tough guards. And, you know, that wasn't a turnover last time, but it may as well have been a block three-point shot. Cool story, too, about Sid Powell at Community College of Beaver County. His idol 
was Kobe Bryant. And we just passed the, the few year anniversary of Kobe's passing. Well, the day after Kobe passed away, Zid Powell put up 81. And he actually airballed a free throw at the end to not get 82 points because he wanted to get what was Kobe's career high of 81. Zid Powell. Cool story for the Philadelphia native. Newman short on the three, makes the two. Unselfish team, really share the basketball, offensive rebound, keep moving. I'll tell you what, I think they need to probably, if you're Western Kentucky, continue to get Newman some looks. He can really score. Frazier the third, tough shot, wow. and that one went in. Left hand, coach wanted an end one, and tie ball game again, you tell. Again, if you're going to the hoop, you better be ready for contact. Let's see what Powell wants. He's going to pull it back. Good ball movement by the Miners. Powell couldn't convert the three. The volleyball, though, by Frazier brings it out for a fresh 20. Hustle plays, extra effort. Those are the types of things on the road. Well, this team's scratching and clawing, trying to get their first road win. They're doing all the little things right right now. 65 all. Shot clock winding down. Powell to the corner. Got to get a shot up. And Camper Jr. could not. And that'll take us to a timeout. 65 all. A good one heading down the stretch in the Bluegrass State. That's up to 292 on the year. It's their 11th consecutive game with nine plus. And there's the updated numbers. Last year, they got to 288, and they've got six more games in the regular season yeah. after tonight. So they are going, they're going to 350 territory probably by the end of this year. And if you're Coach Lutz during that timeout, you're saying take care of the basketball. Ball fakes, extra passes, be strong with the ball. Can't turn it over. And they turn it over again, jumping and passing lanes. Wow, is UTEP good on defense. And they cough it up at the other end themselves. And that's their 13th turnover. So they've got 13 on the wrong side. They've forced 14 for the Hilltoppers. They just make everything difficult. So much credit Joe Golden and the staff. Boy, they just find a way to dig in and get in those passing lanes and create havoc. Christian Lander back in the lineup tonight, and he's got a basket up to five points now for the former Indiana Hoosier. Yeah, he's going to be a big piece for them as they head into March and he gets healthy. They were without and have been without Jalen Jackson for a while. He went down in December, and then they had Lander out of the lineup for several games. A couple of key guys the Hilltoppers didn't have together. They at least get Lander back now. Jackson out for the year with a broken foot. Newman for three. Got it. Timeout, UTEP. Every time the Miners make a run tonight, the Hilltoppers have. But Timmy Doyle calls him uh, one of our great CBS Sports Network analysts and another Long Islander like myself. McHenry, the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week. He's had that honor a couple of times this year. Got 16 points. He had 18 in the first meeting against the Miners. Newman almost took it away from Camper. Newman's been great in the second half. Obviously, his offense has led to some good defense, but he's a guy that can really, you know, with his veteran play, mentioned, you know, transfer from Purdue, do a lot on both ends of the court for the tops. Camper Jr. looking back door for Hardy. Tough shot. Got it somehow and a foul. Wow. Wow, <laughs> Tay Hardy. Oh, we had a right when we featured these two guards in the front. I mean, just two of the better guards in the entire league. Watch this movement without the ball. Catch, finish. Just straight toughness. Every time you think UTEP's kind of out of it, what a pass and a catch. Left hand finish. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. Hardy misses, trying to convert. And it's going to be Western Kentucky ball, a foul inside against UTEP. I think if UTEP does not find a way to win this game, it's going to be free-throw shooting that they're going to look back on and say, man, we gave a lot of points away. 
12 of 21 at the line tonight. Remember, they were 24 out of 29 when they knocked off the Hilltoppers in El Paso back in January. And free throws have been an issue of late. It was not a problem for them in the first meeting between the two clubs, though. Three-point game. McHenry on the take. That's good for an and-one opportunity. The McHenry is up to 18 points. I think if you're UTEP, you gotta you gotta actually force him to go to his left. He's so crafty and tough going to his right and come back with that left hand. And just a knack for making big baskets when they need him as well. Both teams now in the bonus the rest of the way as McHenry goes for point number 19. His first free throw of the night. He is 85% on the year at the stripe. That's the other thing. So good at taking it to the hoop, and then he's going to convert most often at that line. It's hard to win on the road. You know, you miss a free throw, then they come down and get a three-point play. That's a four-point swing on the road. Tough to overcome. Toppers have found a way to answer every UTEP run tonight, and now Powell turns it over. And a timeout taken by Joe Golding. Five and a half left in the second half. Western Kentucky leading by half a dozen. At Public Rec, we're on a mission to make comfort look good. It starts with our best-selling all-day, everyday pant. A first-of-its-kind technical pant that's more comfortable than jeans and more stylish than sweats. The secret is in the sizing. With Public Rec, you can choose your waist and length to guarantee a perfect fit. So you can be comfortable and feel confident always. The all-day, everyday pant by Public Rec. Well, we had good reason before the game to highlight Tay Hardy and Don McHenry, and we've got good reason to go right back to that well. Two of the top scoring guards in Conference USA, and they have done their thing tonight, Mo. And versatile, too, right? Can do a little bit of everything. They're good on the defensive end. They share the basketball. They can finish. They also have a really unique ability to make big shots when your team needs it. So a little full-court pressure now from UTEP. They're going to try to deny that inbounds pass and try to pick up the pace of this game here down six. Hardy a 6'3 senior from Georgia. McHenry a 6'2 junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know what he reminds me of a little bit? Go back, date myself here a little bit. But he's also from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Nick Van Exel is a lefty. Long NBA career. Yep. And I believe a Milwaukee native as well. And that is Don McHenry with 22 points on the evening. He probably wasn't even born when Nick Van Exel was playing, but boy, has he put on a show here tonight. He was a first-team All-American last year at the JUCO level. Hardy trying to answer, and Foz got the rebound. And this is danger zone time now. Western Kentucky leading by nine. McHenry looking for the encore. Miners need a bucket. They get it in a loud way from Corey Camper Jr. Wow, what a catch and finish. This team is fast, boy, I tell you. If you blink, you're going to miss no. it. Big defensive possession here, though. Down seven. Momentum for Western Kentucky. Got to find a steal, dig down, and play through this whole possession. Marshall into five, and he got fouled. And Powell thought he had a clean strip. They're going to give it to Powell, his first. And you can tell from his reaction, he did not agree. Now, Fa is two out of five at the strike tonight. Tegan Moore ready to come in for the Hilltoppers. Tay Hardy spending time with Christopher Merlot, one of the officials, as Fa hits the first one. Lander will come out for Western Kentucky. Tell you the officials have done a good job tonight. It's been a physical game. I mean, every possession is just contested. That's been part of the fun is yeah. the physicality, and they're, yeah. they're letting them play sure in are. large part. That's what I mentioned earlier. It kind of has like a postseason feel to it. They're really going at it. Every possession, both sides. 
Nine point game again. Hardy. Newman the rebound. Look at McHenry slice and dice. <laughs> you know, I said it in the first half. He's one of those basketball players, really unique. He's actually faster with the basketball in his hand, and boy, can he score. He is up to 24 now. Fifth consecutive game, he's had 20 plus. Kalu had it blocked and got fouled. Well, the reigning player of the week in Conference USA, Mr. McHenry, the Don, doing it for the toppers, up 11 to get in or they're you know really really close I think St. Mary's is in regardless so gonna be a really interesting conference tournament out west we got to go back to 1998 the last time the Zags were not in the tournament you were talking before the game too Mo you feel like St. Mary's is really really good I think they're in they're playing really well right now obviously they got a couple four quad one wins but they're they're just playing well at the right time but never count out Mark Few the Gales, 11-0 in the West Coast Conference. They've won 12 in a row overall. Some good stuff coming up later tonight right here on CBS Sports Network. And for the UTEP Miners, the time is now with that free throw for Kalu. They're within 10 with 3.39 to go here in Kentucky. Let's see if they bring the full court pressure after the made free throw. Kalu misses the second one. And they'll try a little bit to get it away from Newman. And here comes McHenry. He's got 24 points. His season high is 30. Already went for the steal. Recovers on Newman. And an offensive foul. Big play right there. He just missed a steal. Like by a centimeter. Stays with the play. Moves his feet. I like the call. And I'll tell you what. Really using his chest. Putting his hands up and selling it. Boy, stay with the play. His team is relentless on defense. It's three on Newman. He comes out. Lander back in with Howard McHenry, Moore, and Marshall on D for the Hilltoppers. Miners need a bucket. Powell, tough shot, and he scores. A dozen now for Powell. Miners within eight, looking for a stop. Three minutes to go. Lander's got an answer. Tell you what, Lander, Newman, and McHenry can all really score in that backcourt. If they get continued good play in the front court, this is going to be a really dangerous team in March. Hardy against Lander. Trying to separate. Shot clock at 10. Powell will take it. That would have been big. Two and a half to go at a 10 point lead for Western Kentucky. Marshall with a beautiful feed. He's had a quiet night scoring. That's a big assist. And 26 now for Don McHenry. Don McHenry doesn't miss. He gets in close. He's a basket maker. Hardy off one foot. Man, the volume of difficult shots in this game has been very high. Now Moore gets fouled. Uh, we featured the right two guys in the open. These two guards have just gone head to head all night and they have not disappointed. Already got kind of got caught on that shot attempt and was able to get it in. He's got 16 points now. Moore's already in double digits. We've seen the balance from the Hilltoppers again tonight. It's exactly what we talked about early. McHenry, the headliner, he's got 25, but then they've got six other players between seven and 11 points tonight. Good looking young freshman from Western Kentucky as well. And a 12 point advantage to match the largest lead of the night. For the Hilltoppers. They had it early in the game. UTEP had a great end of the first half. And now Western Kentucky trying to pull away. Terrell Jr. needed it. Didn't get it. Marshall the rebound. Yeah. 
90 seconds left and looking like the Hilltoppers will improve to 11 and one in this building in UTEP. That elusive road win looking slim now. Two more for Tegan Moore. Whew. He's a bucket getter too. He's got 14. Tough shot for Frazier the third and he'll have free throws coming now. Joe Golding knows his team is running out of time right now. You said coming in, you felt like Western Kentucky had a lot of different ingredients, Mo, to make them such a dangerous team. What has stood out the most now that you've watched them for almost 40 minutes here tonight? I think the depth and, and the speed and then the ability to play different teams. You know, they can go big, they can go small. And then I think that having a point guard like Don McHenry just pushes everybody's right button. So I like the depth and the versatility of this team. Steve Lutz's team a half game back at the top going into the night in Conference USA. Frazier the third hits the second one trailing Sam Houston and Louisiana Tech both of those teams in action tonight. The nine team league Kennesaw State will join next year. Some newcomers in Sam Houston New Mexico State Liberty Jacksonville State and this Hilltoppers team. <laughs> as a turnover by McHenry will lead to a Frazier dunk. 14 for Frazier and a timeout taken by Joe Golding. Under a minute to go. Western Kentucky on its way on their way toward win number 18 on the year. Here's what they've got coming up. They are right back in this building on Saturday against New Mexico State. That was the team that UTEP knocked off last weekend. Then they'll play at Middle Tennessee next week in the 100 Miles of Hate regional <laughs> rivalry for the Hilltoppers That's and the great. Blue Raiders. That's great. Oh. Marshall saving it and a whistle and a timeout taken by Steve Lutz. Marshall saying I was about to get an assist and Howard was about to get a dunk there. <laughs> Under 40 to go now. Western Kentucky enjoying a comfortable advantage. Steve Lutz and company on their way here at Western Kentucky. Marshall gets it into Tegan Moore. 88 77 more having a big night and he gets fouled. And Corey Camper Jr. Was the one who picked up that foul his first of the night. And Moore will head to the line. So Western Kentucky is going to go to seven and four in Conference USA. They entered play tonight a half game back as Moore is up to 15 points now. And UTEP is going to drop to four and six. Remember, this is typically a one bid conference for the NCAA tournament. The other thing to remember is the regular season champion no longer gets an automatic bid to the NIT. So yeah, the conference point. tournament is even more crucial for some of these mid major conferences like Conference USA. If you finish in the top two in the conference, you get a day off in the conference tournament between the quarterfinals and the semis. So if you're Western Kentucky, you are really trying to find a way to get into the top two. Three more for Hardy, and he's up to 19 on the night now. And Tegan Moore will dribble it out. And Western Kentucky is going to take this one over UTEP 90 to 80. The Miners gave them all they could handle. Ultimately, Don McHenry and the Hilltoppers were too much. This Western Kentucky team's got depth, scoring, toughness. They can do it all. A lot of credit to UTEP. They played really hard on the road. Just not quite enough scoring tonight. Don't go away. We will wrap things up from Western Kentucky when we return. The Hilltoppers. 11 and 1 now at home as they beat the Miners.